In tonight's quilt, I'm going to explore my minimalist side by making an artistic statement with the placement of negative space. I'm just kidding. I'm making a really easy beginner friendly quilt that has plenty of room for the quilting. So if you're a quilting expert, you don't even need to stick around. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Don't go anywhere. I need your help answering questions in the comments. Plus, I'm going to show you some great machine quilting designs and tips. So let's get to it. First things first, we're gonna cut this roll of pre-cut strips into smaller sections. And that's what makes this quilt so perfect. Easy cutting, easy piecing, lots of fun for the machine quilting. Now, when cutting your pre-cut strips, you can stack them on top of each other. In fact, that's how I prefer to do it. And you can refer to the free pattern, which I wrote just for you, to get the exact sizes to cut these into. I'll have some longer ones, some shorter ones, and some middle size ones to make a perfect strip quilt. And I'm using beautiful solid fabrics because they're the perfect way to let the quilting shine. But as I'm cutting them, I'm not paying too much attention to what strips I'm cutting and to what sizes. I want a good random mix of different fabrics. Just gonna make sure the strips are lined on top of each other, trim off the selvages, and then cut them into my different pieces. What I love about pre-cut strips is they're so great for beginner quilters or quilters that wanna get through the piecing so they can get to the quilting. I mean, I don't know who that would be. Since they're already pre-cut, all you have to do is make that second cut to cut them into different sizes. And let me give you a hint, you haven't seen the whole quilt yet, but I promise even if they're not perfectly cut, it's gonna be fine because this is a quilt where none of the seams have to match up. And this bunch of pre-cut fabrics have so many beautiful colors, so you'll have a rainbow of a quilt. Okay, once you have your strips cut out, remember they don't have to be perfect, just beautiful and all the colors that you love, then we're gonna cut our background fabric into nice big pieces so that we can sew our quilt top. That's right, we are practically to the arranging of the quilt top. Oh, love the fabric. I just love it, I love it. Pretty colors, oh, so great. And it's mine, all mine. Ooh. Now that all those colors are <clears throat> out of sight and I can focus on the background fabric, I'm gonna cut some pretty big chunks out of this. Now I'm working with a beautiful gray background. I think it's the perfect neutral, but of course, since it's a free pattern, you could use any color that you'd like. Now when you're cutting bigger pieces of fabric, especially if you're newer to quilting, here's a couple things to make it a little easier. First, I like to go ahead and fold my fabric twice. If you do this, just make sure the two sides are parallel so that you get a nice cut. I'm also going to use the reference lines on my mat position and make a good clean cut across the area. Now, of course, you have the free pattern, so you don't have to worry about knowing the exact sizes. But once you have your strip cut, then you can subcut it into your smaller sizes. So I'm going to rotate it and trim off those selvages. We don't need those. Are you starting to see why I like pre-cut strips so very much? Even if you're not a brand new quilter, this is a great project to do for challenges with your quilt group, a great charity quilt, a great quilt for practicing your machine quilting. I think it's just a great quilt all around. I'm gonna finish cutting my background into big pieces and then I'll show you how to sew the strips together to make our negative space quilt. That's probably the easiest quilt I've ever cut out. But now that all my pieces are ready, I'm gonna start sewing my strips together into strip units. So I've gathered strips of the same size and I'm gonna sew them along the long edge to make a longer strip unit. Now what's nice about this is I can put them together and sew them together in groups of two and because I'm such a precise piecer and I want it to be perfect, I'm definitely gonna pin each and every one. Well, I'm not, but, but you probably should, just on the safe side. I've even put a little bit of washi tape here to help keep me on the right track. What I love about chain piecing or sewing multiple groups at one time is it's so efficient, plus it helps keep everything in order. I mean, if there was an order to the pattern, this one, there isn't. It's very scrappy, so no worries on that side. A quick press and my first strip unit is done, and would you believe I actually have the first row of my quilt? It's a small quilt. No, I'm just kidding. I just have to add two background pieces, and then I'll have row one of my quilt finished. A quick press and my first row is complete. All I have to do is continue that using different size strips and different size background pieces until I have all the rows of my quilt finished. 
Let me show you what that looks like. All right, my first strip is done. I actually already pieced the second strip and it's pieced the same way as the first one. The only difference is I'm using those longer strips and sewing along the length. Same thing, just a little bit of longer seam, but it's not difficult. But here's what I love about this pattern. It's almost like I don't like making my points match. When I go to sew these together, there's no points or corners or areas that have to match. If I'm aiming for anything, I'm trying to make it even on both sides, but even if it's not, I could trim it up if necessary. So I'm gonna put this right sides together, sew it, and then you'll see what it looks like when I'm finished. And if you look closely, you can see all the rows with the strips going in different ways, plenty of big background areas for the machine quilting. It's gonna be the best part. So I'm gonna get this quilt sandwich basted and we'll get to the quilting. So I have my quilt sandwich basted. I've got my quilting gloves on. I'm ready to go. But first, I wanna answer a couple questions I've seen popping up in the comments. The first comment slash question I read was from Sunshine Jennifer Cook. And she said, I may gasp, but she really likes piecing the quilt tops, but she's scared about the machine quilting. <gasps> Okay, that's not too surprising. A lot of quilters feel that way. So as a result, Jennifer has quite a few quilt tops laying around. What should she do with them? What should she do with quilt tops just laying around? I don't know. Now I get it. Look, machine quilting can be scary, especially if you put a lot of time and effort into your quilt. So when it comes to machine quilting it, first of all, you can't enjoy your quilts until they're quilted. So it's probably a good idea to either find a professional quilter or just bite the bullet and do it yourself. But I will say the secret to great quilting, you wanna hear it? Is using a thread color that matches your quilt top and then just quilt the whole thing. I think people will notice a gap in the quilting before they notice an error. So as long as the whole thing is quilted, all you'll see is the overall texture. Now, if that's still a little too scary, you can try walking foot quilting. You can try doing decorative stitches or you can find a local long armor that will trade services with you because if you like to piece, I bet there's people out there that are just perfect for you. They probably love the quilting, but not the piecing. But the moral of the story, get the quilts quilted. That's what you need to do. Alexander G commented, love my videos, thank you. But also asked, do I ever do curved piecing? Great question. I only do it when I absolutely can't avoid it. Okay, that's a little bit dramatic. Curved piecing isn't difficult, and I have done it a couple times, most notably the color block quilt in an earlier season. So you can check out that one. In the video, I throw a pretty epic fit, so it's kind of worth watching just for that. But when it comes to curved piecing, I should probably try to incorporate more of those in the future, so I don't know, stay tuned. And there's so many great questions. I love reading them, so make sure you're leaving your comments and asking your questions, and I know that other quilters will chime in with their suggestions as well. But by far, the number one subject I'm asked about is how to piece so perfectly. Oh wait, no, I'm just kidding. It's in the machine quilting, of course. I know it can be a little bit scary, so now I'm gonna break down a few tips on helping you pick out designs and fill in your quilts. So in my negative space quilt, I have plenty of area to quilt. And for me, a good rule of thumb is if a quilt was easy to piece, then I'm gonna make it more intricate with the quilting. If I have a quilt that has tons of spikes and paper piecing and all this stuff going on, I'm gonna keep the quilting a little more basic. So you know what that means. We're gonna have a lot of fun with this. Now, when you look at those big areas, they can be overwhelming, but what I'm gonna do is use the quilting to break them up in smaller chunks. What I like to do is imagine that my piecing is going to extend out and create different effects in the background space. That's also gonna help break it up into smaller chunks and then I'm gonna fill it in with a bunch of different designs. I just can't hardly wait, so let's get to it. So using my ruler, I'm going to extend the piecing by quilting a line out into the negative space. And then at a random point, I'm gonna make it turn a corner. The reason I'm doing this is it just keeps those straight lines a little bit shorter. Traveling along the edge of the quilt, I'm gonna quilt another line that echoes it, coming back to the piecing. Now, I want it to show up just a little bit, so I'm gonna add an echo line on each side it's gonna really help separate it from the filler. And then in between, I'm thinking a fun pointy zigzag is gonna be a great way to quilt this design. So starting from the edge, I'm gonna quilt a line diagonal towards the other side, but as soon as I approach the edge, I'm going to echo the side back the direction I came and go down the next side at an angle, stopping when I run into the edge. Echoing the side and going down to the next angle. I'm gonna keep going until I hit the corner and I'm gonna start quilting that shape so that it goes in the opposite direction. Now what's nice about this design is at the points, I can stop and reposition the quilt, 
But what's tricky about this design is at the points, I can get a little thread buildup where the bobbin shows. And because I'm quilting the design out into the negative space, I'm gonna continue it in the strips. And I think it's just a great way to tie in the quilting from the blocks into the background area. Now, sometimes I go against my own advice. You know, I always say, use the same color bob and thread and as you do the top, and I thought I'd be try to be quick. So even though I had blue thread in the top, I just pulled a silver bobbin, because I already had it ready, and in the gray doesn't look too bad, but as you can see, once I got to the red, you could start seeing that bobbin thread from the back. So I'm gonna say it adds a beautiful texture. It's really a two-tone quilting job. It's very tricky. Oh, no, that's just because I had a different bobbin color. I'm definitely not ripping it out though. I'm gonna go ahead and just change my bobbin and come back and continue quilting. If it really bothers me when I'm done, I might just take a little blue Sharpie and color those in. I'm just saying, it's an easy way to do it. All right, when I'm using the quilting in the negative space to break it up, I don't have to rely on the piecing. I can just create my own shapes. In the corner, I'm gonna go ahead and just add another design and fill it in the same way I did that one. So mimicking the shape I've just quilted, I've created a space and filled it in exactly the same way as I did the strip. In the first lines, I used a ruler, and I think a ruler is a great way to transition from walking foot quilting to free motion quilting. But it's also a great way to quilt those straight-ish lines on your quilt. Now, if your machine doesn't have a ruler foot available or you don't have rulers, you can still freehand those straight-ish lines. So in the second section, I started by quilting my straight-ish lines just by free motion quilting. Now that means the lines aren't gonna be exactly perfect, but that's okay. There's no such thing as perfection in free motion quilting, but I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, filling it in with the same design and adding echoing to separate it from its filler. Because once I've went through and added all my fun little designs with the blue thread, I'm gonna switch to a thread that matches and start filling in the background of the background quilting with some fun different textures, as well as finishing up some of those strips. So I'm gonna change thread and we'll see what that looks like. I think I'm gonna start by quilting little boxes that echo towards the inside. And then once I get to the center, I'm gonna travel right on it, cross those lines, and quilt my next box and fill it in. Even though they're straight lines, I'm not using a ruler because they're pretty short, and it's okay if they're not perfect. If you get tired of quilting those, you can go right into a different design. So using my ruler now, I'm gonna quilt a bigger space, echo it a couple times, and then fill it in with a different texture. And here I'm just quilting swirls that echo each other, and filling in that block completely. You could quilt any design you wanted to here, a meander, a leafy design. You could quilt Angela's Awesome, really, whatever you felt like quilting. But once the whole block is filled in, again, you can travel right across those lines and onto the next thing. Since I happen to be close to a strip, I'm just gonna travel along the edge, little stitching in the ditch, get to the center of the side, and start quilting a different design. This is what I love about quilting. You can create so many different designs and textures, and if you don't love one, you can just switch on to the next one. So I'm gonna work my way down the strip, quilting these little starburst shapes, backtracking and continuing on in the direction I wanna quilt. Even though the thread contrasts a little bit with the fabric, I think it still looks fun, and it's gonna add a pop of texture to the quilting. I've only quilted a little section of my quilt, and I've already used a lot of different designs. I hope this gives you the encouragement to try different things, because if you don't love it, you can just switch to something else. Well, I have a lot more space to fill in, so I'm gonna get to it. So whether you're new at piecing or machine quilting, I think this is the perfect quilt for you. I love how the fabrics are so randomly placed and the quilting designs really fill in those areas. Trying a bunch of different designs made the quilting so much fun and really kind of took the pressure off learning new designs. So when you're making your quilt, I hope you'll remember how great it is to have it finished, to sit underneath it with a little bit of quilting juice, and I hope that you'll enjoy the whole process. Now don't forget, this pattern is free, so download it, the link is below. And also, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Here's what I know about quilters. We are so eager to jump in and help each other out and to encourage each other, so that's what we're here for. Just keep the wine in a safe place.